too good of a welcome to our Kentucky home. John here. I'm in Old Blue this afternoon. Uh, I run into a deal that uh, I couldn't pass up. Had to run out and grab it. Um, if you take a look in the back there, we got us a got us a big load of free ash. Um, from a gentleman just lives a couple miles from us and uh, the utility company came out and took it down it had it had fallen on his carport and um, got the power lines in the meantime so they took it down and left all the wood there and uh, he was gracious enough to get Old Blue and I have made it back to the house. This load of ash. Got to get it offloaded. I've still got oh, 10 or 12 big rounds over there that uh, I'm going to take the saw and rip them in half so I can get them loaded. Back here in the yard, um, you can see I started to get that, uh, that big pile of... Uh, hardwood tie-ins stacked. I've, I've got about half of it moved. Big blue. We, we, we don't hardly ever, ever pass free hardwood for burning. This ash is, it was standing dead. It's not punky at all. It's still good, good solid wood. I'll get it cut up and, and split it and Put a moisture meter on it and, but i think that'll be ready to burn this winter i think we can put this right right on the front of the shed um, can't hardly can't hardly pass up free hardwood when it's close anyways i love this old truck you know it does does all my heavy work for me uh, the reason i say close is because she's a good running old truck but she's got a drinking problem and uh you know with fuel prices the way they are uh, don't want to have to go too far for it but uh we'll never complain and uh seems like the lord always blesses us with uh with what we need and i'll uh get back with you here in a little while hi everybody welcome to our kentucky home John here. I got this load of ash that I picked up from a gentleman last evening. Brought it home. No more than got home and the weather give give out on me and didn't get a chance to unload it. So it's the next day. I just got home from work and I'm going to get this unloaded and we're going to some of it uh, is a little bit long and we're going to get the saw out and. Uh, use a clamping device and show you kind of what I use that for as well and uh, we'll uh, run one or two of the saws this evening so I'm gonna get busy and get this unloaded I'll get back with you in just a few minutes okay as you can see I got that pile of ash all unloaded. Gonna set this camera down here, get it right. Gonna
pretty firm believer in wearing your PPE, your protective equipment. Not interested cutting my legs or anything else for that matter. Um, got my hearing protection in. <clears throat> We're gonna, I've got two of my saws here. I've got this Hulse Forma. And we're going to see how she runs. Now that saw is the clone of the 372 and I put a big bore piston kit in it and uh, it goes through this ash like nothing. We'll uh, that's good hard wood too. We'll fire up our 562 and see how it performs. Oh, <laughs> 
have to forgive me but I keep filling up with sweat as you can see both these saws run outstanding a couple of my favorites this uh, whole form of saw this 372 I believe I I believe it's a 377 or 78 now with the bigger piston and cylinder on it it is uh, very soon I'm gonna take you off here this saw here is very soon going to get a uh, I took the original cylinder and ported it I've been working on that on porting that cylinder and it's going to go back to a 372 saw and we're going to do some comparisons between the 372 and the the big board, the 377. I tell you, the secret, and I said this before in another video, to keeping these saws in top shape is running the correct fuel and the correct fuel mixture. I wouldn't recommend anything less than 90 octane in. Um, in a non-ethanol the 562 here it'll pull a 24 inch bar it's recommended 18 to 28 I haven't put a 28 on it I have run a 24 a couple times and a full chisel 3 8 50 and it it pulls just fine I use this uh, 20 inch bar on it quite a bit and put the bigger bars on the 372 um, the the trick is keep that blade sharp make sure it's getting plenty of oil um, you don't need to have the oil slinging everywhere just just make sure it's getting plenty of oil most of these all have a oil adjustment on them Keep them clean, keep the chain adjusted right, blow them out when you're done with them, wipe them out, whatever you need to do, and these things will run and run and run. And uh, this saw is getting, I've had it a few years, it's, it's getting a few scratches on it here and there from being used, but uh, like I said, uh, I use them. This auto-tune in, in these new 5 Series, the 562, the 572, 592. Um, it's it's really nice because it doesn't matter what the weather is. You start this baby up and let it run for a couple minutes, and it will tune itself right in. And uh, they will just cut and cut and cut. I haven't had the opportunity to run a 572. I really like these old 372 style saws. 395, 394s, they're uh, just tried and true. And like I said, I wanted to, uh, been wanting to try one of these holes for us because of the cost. I, I think I have about, oh, with the big bore kit and piston, um, somewhere around $350, $375 maybe it's, it's got caber rings and highway cylinder on it and it, uh, it it's really they're really simple to work on um, got to do a little timing work uh, with this port job I'm doing but I've listened to a lot of uh, a lot of saw people and they they tell me a good good I want a good work saw they tell me the numbers that I need for for that for the timing and uh, that's what we're going to shoot for and I've had I've had a little bit of experience with uh, with port work in my life uh, years ago I 
ported a lot of heads, that sort of stuff, um, for General Motors vehicles, and um, always seemed to make good horsepower. So this is kind of a toy saw. I'm not going to take a brand new 372 Husqvarna and dig into it like that. Wouldn't want to do something wrong with a $300 saw. It's a little different, but um, I am. Um, I sure do enjoy my saws and working with them. And they seem to run great and just just take care of them. I'm gonna um, get back to work here and uh, finish knocking this stuff up, get it ready to split, and we'll get back with y'all after a while. That's it. It's all bucked up, ready for the splitter. Whole load of free wood. We'll take it. We love it. I'm gonna go back over. If the weather holds out, looks like rain again right now. If, um, try to get the rest of those big rounds of this ash. You see this ash? It's it was standing dead. But uh, it's solid as a rock. We'll never pass that up. I'll, uh, we'll get these saws in and get them cleaned up and blowed out here in a minute and call this part portion finished. So just for the sake of cleanliness and not dirtying up my garage real bad. I'll kind of give you a, an idea of what I do to clean them up. I brought my air hose out. Just start by knocking all of anything you can see off the saw itself. You blow off the air from here. Would come on. We'll take our strength. One thing I really like about the new, the newer saws. The 5 Series there, they have the captured nuts on the covers. You can see all the grind. Just from a little bit of what I've been running that, you can see it. Not sure if you can or not. We'll want to put that back in. Hey guys. Clean that 
up real nice. Put it on the bar. You can see the grime out of it. Just just for that little bit of use. Look at that. That's what I do and I always always touch the chains up. Check them real good before I run them again. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we can use all the support we can get. and uh, We appreciate you stopping by. Until next time, God bless. Take care.